Hello dear unicorns and welcome to your monthly tarot reading. So this is for the month of May. Um, May, it's my birthday in May. It's really Taurus season. Um, <laughs> I just claim the whole month, that's what I do as a sun <laughs> sign. So, you know, we're in the heart of spring at this point. Um, and this reading is just to give us an overview of the energies of the month. So we have our new and full moon readings that take us through the breakdown of the weeks each month. But this is like, what does May have in store for us? Like, what does it have to offer us? What do we have to learn from it? And this just gives us a highlight for the entire month of May. So here we go, okay? So um, this is a seven card reading, as I always do. I will lay them out and then I will show you one card at a time. I'm using the Wild Unknown deck again. Again, a bit of my return to roots with this deck. It's been a long time since I've had it out. Um, feels good, like an old friend's back, you know? Um, so here we go. What does May have to offer us? Here we go. I have to say May is one of my most favorite months because it's my birthday month. <laughs> okay? And then for the rest of my life, it's my birthday and then Mother's Day the week after. So it is a month of celebration in my life. And I hope it is in yours as well. So, May. Here we go. Okay, the overall energy of the month. Nine of Wands, which this is cool. So, if you haven't watched your full moon reading for April 29th, right, that energy still carries in to May. And that reading had a lot of wands in it, right? Bravery, courageousness. I always think of them as magic wands, making things happen, igniting things to come to fruition, getting things started or running at home, you know? Um, so the energy of May overall is nine of wands. Nine of wands in this deck is super cool. It's like the level up, right? It's like this, oh, it, it, depending on the vibe of the reading, but this one for sure is like, nope, you get to go up a level. <laughs> you've done your work. Uh, you've been brave and courageous about putting yourself out there, about making changes, about ditching things, releasing things. Um, that full moon, I mean, they're about releases, but that reading was like really about releasing things. So the energy of May goes, your load is lighter. You get to go up to the next level. So it's a bit of an elevator. Um, or an escalator, you know, or those stairs that are unencumbered and open. Like, you just gotta go. Like, your light's waiting. Just go for it. Um, in this, you know, deck, it, it, you know, it is, it's not like it's a totally free and clear path because it's a little brambly. But nine is about karmic closures and cycles ending, meaning that you've really closed a loop on the energy plane that you really did burn some karma, you dropped some baggage, you did some major healing, um, that doesn't come without some work and some discomfort. And so it's just, you know, keep your foot hold, like thoughtful and careful, like don't sprint up to that next level. It's there, the path is open, but you're still gonna have to be a little ginger and a little thoughtful on the way up, okay? That's wonderful. Um, Two, what to leave behind. Okay, so this card always gets misinterpreted and it's the judgment card. So it's, you know, it's not about judgment. I mean, yes, we all need to leave behind judgment, but I'm kind of a fan of judgment, if you know me, um, if you're a student and follower, or, you know, for a long time now, because judgment does get a bad rap. And I'm all about like getting clear as to what the official meanings and real origins of things are. Like judgment is the only way to make decisions. We are all super judgy at all times. We have to make choices. And in order to make a choice, you have to make a judgment call, right? This is asking, like the card of judgment actually means you want to check and make sure things are in balance, right? Like, are you being fair about your judgment calls? Are you choosing and engaging and acting on the things that you have made a judgment on and go, yes, that's for me, no, that's not for me. Yes, I need to make a change. Well, have you changed anything yet? So in the tarot, the judgment card calls to balance and to doing what's fair and right for the situation, 
okay? Which you always want to do what's fair and right for yourself, but you also want to do what's fair and right for the highest and greatest good of all. So judgment just puts that little card out there that says, just check yourself. Are you really doing what's fair for everybody and what's right and best for all? So this is about what we're leaving behind this month, you know, what to release. Um, this deck has a, a, a bit of a double meaning too. Judgment can also be a, a, a union with spirit, a union with divine spirit, and you get released from the dark, shadowy business. And coming off of that full moon reading, this is where it's taking us. You've got to leave your personal judgments and the dark stuff kind of behind in order to rise up, in order to be the dove out of the bats. And when you rise up, man, we get this like that reading and this reading really clear. When you rise up, you become a leader for others to follow in a constructive way to create more balance overall. So I always talk about becoming a unicorn in the Unicorn Wellness Handbook that I wrote, that becoming a unicorn is like the most powerful magical thing in the world to do because the only thing we ever have any control over, the only thing we can ever really change is ourselves. And when we personally evolve for the better, and that's by taking self-care and self-respect and self-introspection, it's everything I teach that changes the world for the better one person at a time. When we learn how to go, I'm gonna make a decision that's the highest and greatest good for all involved. When we, we come, I, I, if, you know, it's like when we come to the altar of, of life, you know, when we step to the altar, like what is our judgment? Have we been fair and empathetic and, um, you know, in a constructive way put ourselves out there? Or have we warriored and broken things down and trudged upon people? Or have we sat around and been like, oh, I can't do anything. I can't help anybody. Nobody should, you know, learn from me. And we've just sat and done nothing. Judgment calls for balance, right? Of the doing and the receiving and the being useful. And also, um, again, receiving. You can be a great teacher and of great use for people and it can bring beautiful abundance into your life. This life is meant to be experienced in all of its rich layers. So like martyrdom's gotta go, you know, like unworthiness has just gotta go. And so May is really like calling you and you're getting called out by the judgment card to like leave the dark behind, rise up as a little free, you know, free bird of peace. Basically have some peace in releasing some of the demons right? We can't release all of them. We do keep those shadow pieces, but we, you know, some of them need to be fed more often, so they're quiet, and some of them need a little bit more petting, so they don't get out of hand, and some of them just need to be hugged, so they don't cause trouble, and some get to be passed along and let go and released, you know, but it's in how we carry our burdens and what balance truly is from the soul level out, okay? So what are we going to learn in May? learning mother of wands. So like I said, we had a lot of wands in that full moon reading and now we got a lot of wands here. Be brave, be courageous, step out, light a fire, be a leader, right? And so May is asking us to learn how to be the mother of wands. Another like serpentine energy, okay? Mother of wands is like, she's fierce, right? She's a snake, she got her magic wand. She's protecting her creative projects. So she protects her babies right? Like snakes still, you know, they, they protect their babies still, even if, you know, whatever you think are the connotation of snakes, but the symbolism of snakes is beautiful. It's evolution. It's ever evolving. It's very feminine. You know, it's supple. It's our spine. Literally, we want our spine functionally to be able to undulate like a snake. It's supposed to. It's built to. It's segmented that way. And so when we get stuck and static in our ways, we're working against our true nature. When we have our back lock up and seize up, you're fighting the wrong things. You're fighting yourself and that supple transition and the beauty in the transitions. So what to learn in May? May is about learning about to protect your creative endeavors. Be a little fierce. You don't always have to be fighting, but keep that little wand nearby just in case you need to, you know, kind of just whoosh somebody off and go, no, 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 you don't need to be here. Out there, you know. So in the f the full moon reading, it has that you know the snake about to strike, no one to strike. Well, here we're getting the call in May to go. Just you don't have to strike just yet. You need to be prepared to strike at all times, but you're resting and protecting 
incubating. It's very incubating. Like there's something growing in this month, a creative endeavor that's very worthwhile, you know, but you're protecting it a little bit right now. You're sitting on it. It's got to bake. The, the, I, you know, talk about the cosmic cake. It's not ready to come out of the oven just yet. Um, so what to receive in May? Seven of Wands. And so Seven of Wands is about being a light to the world. Like kind of getting your own flame this month and going, I get it. I get how I can be a leader for the more positive. And leader doesn't mean you have to have like legions of people following you. As parents, we're leaders every day to the little people in our lives that we're trying to raise, right? As caretakers, as aunties, as a family, you know, again, that, that symbolism of being a unicorn in the world, when you change yourself for the better, you change the world one person at a time. The way you respond, the way you think, the way you solve becomes different and that changes the dynamic of everything in your radius, right? And so, you know, May is really asking us to receive. It's like receiving our radius. You know, it's like the universe is like, the light's always been on. You just didn't know it. And so it was kind of dim, you know. And so it's like this month, it's like the switch gets flipped and you're like, Zzz, but you're comfortable in it now. Whereas before, maybe it didn't feel so comfortable. It felt awkward. It's like, hey, don't look at me. I'm not, oh, I'm not anybody. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not leading anything. Please don't look this direction. And then you have to go, no, nope, this is what I lead. This is who I'm modeling behavior for. These are the people who do see me. And I'm going to step into it in a really beautiful, warm, and shining way. And I always sing the darn song because I love it, you know. It's, it's <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so it's just kind of like, you know, just traipsing through your life, just singing that little song in your head. And that changes the energy around you just by being you, just by shifting. Like, no, I am a child of God. I am a light in the world. And every small interaction with somebody really matters and sends that ripple effect. So be the light, right? We are each the light. We just have to embrace it, not be afraid of it, and just go, yep, I'm going for it. So seven is also what I call the self-help number. It's about preparation and self-work, right? Self-evaluation in the cards. You got to put the self-care and self-respect. You need to be getting on the mat and, and working the movement. Movement isn't about the aesthetics. It's about the way our body functions. We're designed to move. It's self-respect and self-care to this vessel to get on the mat consistently and, and use the movement, you know, and exercise to influence our energies for the positive, right? And our emotions. So seven is about, um, you know, luck. And luck is really when preparation meets timing. So there's also a call here to kind of like May could be some of the timing that you've been waiting for if you've been diligent, because this is about receiving. It's in the receiving placement. Yeah, there, there's some recognition. There's some opportunity. There's some there's some receiving going to happen. Yay. <laughs> because you're willing to step into your power and go, I'm not uncomfortable here anymore. It's really actually a really great place to be. And it's really nice to be helpful. Um, five assets to this month. Mother of Pentacles. This is such a dear card. Okay. Literally. <laughs> um, so Mother of Pentacles. Pentacles is your abundance, right? It's also what I call the karma card. If what you reap, you sow. So the work and the effort you put in, you will get back. The timing on that, you never know. The intentions that you put towards it, is it with love or is it with spite? You know, that's going to come back with it too. So you have to be careful about the energy that you work with. Are you doing things because other people want you to? Are you doing things to prove somebody wrong? Are you doing things to like, you know... Or are you doing them because you love them, because you really want to help, because it nurtures? So this is a very nurturing card in this deck in particular. So Mother of Pentacles is like, she's the queen of pentacles. She is the queen of abundance. And she is, you know, so feminine that she's like, I'm just going to sit here and receive. But she's very protective also, right? Protective. Look, we've got the, like the mother's flanking. Protective of their creative endeavors. Because as a mother, your children, they're a creative endeavor, right? They're what you have produced in the world. And so this can be um, relationships, this can be children, this can be um, businesses and creative projects, you know, it, it can be your artwork, it can be a business. But queens, like, they are protective. And, and if you think about queens, it's like whether they're the ice queen or whether they're, you know, more of a, you know, the benevolent loving, there is a quietness to them, right? There is a quiet power 
to queens. That you just kind of go, you just take a little step back and you go, what are they going to do? So this is a bit of a call that in order to protect the things you've created, in order to protect your creative endeavors, the things that you love, that you're nurturing and growing and sending off into the world, that it's okay to be quiet about them and you don't need to explain them to everybody, right? You're not here to explain, you're here to be in union and in flow with divine spirit and to give your gifts and to be of use for the highest and greatest good of all, no matter what path that takes, that's the point is to evolve through the hard parts. So I, I feel, <laughs> yeah, it's this very like queenly stately, like you don't need to run your mouth so much about it. There's gonna be people poke at you, right? Because you're being protective. But you don't have to be aggressive to protect something. Sometimes quiet, like, <laughs> that's my kids, right? When mama bear goes like silent, that's when they're like, oh. That was a boundary I should not have crossed, right? <laughs> Silence is really powerful. So, um, yeah. Remember that no is a complete sentence. Somebody asks you something, you just go, no. I, we, we are a culture, especially of women, who like then feel like we have to explain why. You don't have to. If they're uncomfortable with a no, that's their problem, right? Y you don't owe them. If you, if you want to explain something, yes. If it's somebody that you go, I really love them and I feel like I need to explain this for this to be really useful, fine. But get out of the habit of explaining all things to all people so that everybody's comfortable. Not everybody needs to be comfortable. To be a queen and to take your place of like that constructive place in ego, constructive place in abundance, constructive place in holding your own space, then sometimes it's just no. Moving on. Explanations often just take up way too much time. Okay? and energy. So, those are the assets of the month, is Mother of Pentacles. This is very stoic, serene, it's very sweet, it's very nurturing energy towards abundance, but it's also about, it's like sitting and receiving. Your children come to you, your creative endeavors come to you, you keep them tucked in right nice and tight, and if something needs to happen in order to protect it, then you get up and do it. But it is about abundance coming in, okay? Um, and that's the asset to May. The obstacle of May. Now this is fascinating because this was in the full moon reading too, but this is showing an obstacle of five. In the obstacle space, you know, five of wands is change. So, you know, having too much change can make you feel really scattered, can make you feel all over the place. Um, and like I said in the last reading too, it can be travel. So the obstacles of this month may be that there's a lot of travel that's in the forecast or you're just feeling like with all the changes and transitions and the new things and opportunities and like trying to get comfortable in your new skin and like holding space without being an a-hole about it, that you just feel really scattered, okay? And then the call and the push in the obstacle is like when you feel scattered, you need to sit. That's why I love the cards because they're tangible and it's that proprioceptive like tactile anchoring and rooting and grounding. Pull some cards for yourself. If you don't have a deck yet, start with an oracle deck um, or you know, get the unicorn wellness handbook if you don't have it yet. It's tangible. It's another reason why I wanted to. It's really short. You can kind of flip through it and it's like, it's your little handbook. It's your go-to like re-grounding, re-rooting start over point. It's an anchor. Um, so oracle cards can be a beautiful anchor of like, I'm feeling kind of flustered and fluttered like how can I root down and, and anchor in and relax and not feel so all over the place? Um, and meditation always, right? Always, always, always. So it's an obstacle for me that it can just feel like, whew, all over the place. Um, this card was also in the full moon reading for April 29th. So again, the energies carry over, they're carrying into this. Like, I love it, I shuffle a lot, you guys see it. Um, so the outcome of May, is four of cups. So here we go with the cups and the miracles and the consistency and the persistence and survival, right? So, and, and rats again are very prolific, right? So this like diligence and persistence and like there's a resistance to it in a good way and it goes deep and it just keeps trucking along, keeps burrowing and keeps going and getting and bringing things back. And so those four cups, they're protecting their the emotions, right? Their love for consistency for the long run. So the outcome of the month is like, it's interesting that there's just more longevity to it. So 
That's a that's an interesting one. And again, we talked about the Four of Cups in the last one being that sometimes you're looking at the wrong cups, like you got three empty ones on the ground next to you, and the universe is offering you one like golden chalice, and you don't see it. So again, be consistent and persistent and keep going, keep working, keep making, keep doing, okay? But also be allowing in that work those gifts of spirit. Because if you miss them, the universe is like, what the hell? You've been asking for this for forever. I just gave it to you. Why are you not taking the call? <laughs> so sometimes in our work and when we keep our noses down, you know, it's always about balance. We got to do the work, but we also got to keep just a little bit of our head in the clouds so that we can have that connection to divine messaging and those opportunities. Because opportunities are funny. Sometimes they are right smack in your face. And sometimes they were this tiny little subtle thing, the card that was handed to you by somebody and you just didn't call them back. And again, the universe is like, you've been asking for this and we just gave it to you. So there's that call to being consistent and persistent and following up and, and introductions. There's been a lot about introductions lately for a lot of the private readings too. So just be on the lookout, like nice little social engagements. People are, who say like, give me a call, like actually give them a call. You never know. Don't get your heart set on things. Keep being diligent and keep, you know, working and doing all the small stuff. But, you know, slow and steady wins the race and rats survive everything okay so there you go the month of may leveling up stepping into your true place of being a leader um if you get feel scattered and kind of all over the place and like remember your grounding and your meditation there's no better place to ground than the mat and in meditation um you know you're learning about being protective in this very regal feminine way and femininity is quiet and it's intuition. It's about how we feel about it. Like, yes, we're intellectual and yes, we want to keep our brain about us. But we always, you know, mother's intuition. So whether you're a mother of a child or a mother of a creative endeavor or a mother of a business, your intuition is right when you anchor into it. So keep anchored in order to know what decisions to make to protect the things that you've built, right? And that we're leaving behind this idea of judgment of being such a bad person because bad things have happened or we've made mistakes or we've made bad choices that we have to stay there. We don't. Be released from that to find balance in, in the energetic plane. Okay. It's a beautiful reading. If you want to book a private reading with me, tandygutierrez.com. You can always book one anytime if you need more clarity onto the details of your path and insight for you. But I love you so very much. Thank you for being a unicorn in the world. And I hope this reading was a gift and gave you a lot of direction and support and things to think about for the highest and greatest good this month.